Our time together during the countdown to Christmas is growing shorter and shorter, but our Christmas spirit is growing larger and larger. For all the ways that Christmas will be different this year due to the pandemic, one thing that won't change is an abiding love for the magic, comfort, and traditions of Christmas. For the memories of Christmas past and the memories in the making that come with each new Christmas season. And for the first time in its five-year run, this season of Christmas Past features several episodes just like this one dedicated to you and those Christmas memories. It's a testament to your Christmas spirit and your willingness to open your hearts by sharing a glimpse of what makes Christmas special to you with the rest of the Christmas Past family. At the time of this recording, I'm planning to release two more episodes like this one before the big day. There isn't much time left, but there's just enough time if you want to be part of the season. Just record a voice memo into your phone and send it to christmaspastpodcast at gmail.com. Just try to keep it reasonably short, clean, and family-friendly, and be sure to say your name and where you're from. Well, it's time to cozy up under a favorite blanket, pour a steaming mug of cocoa, and reminisce with the stars of this episode. One of the hallmarks of celebrating the season is reconnecting with those treasured keepsakes from Christmas past. Maybe you've got some favorite decorations or ornaments. I myself have a collection of vinyl records that I grew up with and handmade decorations from my mom, but I don't have anything quite like Sylvia in Calgary has. As a French Canadian, the nativity scene was a big part of Christmas. My uncle built us a beautiful wooden manger where we put the figurines. We had the traditional ones, but also others like the lady with the basket full of fish, the beggar and his dog, the goat, many sheep and shepherds, and of course, many angels. Every year, I built hills and a decor for the scene. My mother allowed me to play with it as long as I was careful. It was my special Christmas doll house. Today, more than 50 years later, I still have the manger and most of the figurines. Some have been glued, all have been repainted, and the childhood memories come back every time I get them out under the tree. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Now everyone knows that the way to Santa's heart on Christmas Eve is with a plate of cookies and a glass of milk or maybe eggnog and perhaps a carrot for the reindeer. But did you know that Santa Claus also loves to be serenaded? Not every household is lucky enough to catch a glimpse of old Saint Nick on Christmas Eve, but Kevin in Chicago is one of the lucky ones. My Nana and Granddaddy had nine children and 26 grandchildren. We'd go over to their house every December to visit with family. And with so many packed in their cozy home and the fire roaring, the windows would fog and it would get warm enough to open the front door to keep us from roasting along with the marshmallows. One of the aunts or uncles would pass around song booklets and we'd sing Christmas songs. Sometimes we'd even have a piano, guitar, or another instrument to accompany us. A fan favorite was the 12 Days of Christmas, where every family would be assigned a day and any new guests would be stuck with the five golden rings solo. At some point throughout our singing, Santa would burst through the front door, ho ho hoing, stating that he heard us singing all the way from the North Pole and wanted to see what all the Christmas commotion was about. We'd sing Santa his favorite song, which tended to be Here Comes Santa Claus or Rudolph, and then he called out each of our names and we'd go sit on Santa's lap to receive a special gift to hold us over until Christmas. Every name that was called from Santa was collectively and rambunctiously repeated by the group for encouragement. And the older or more reluctant you were to sit on Santa's lap, the more enthusiastic that encouragement was. Once all the gifts were given and Santa had to head back to the North Pole, we sang one more song to send him off. By this time, all the kids were dying to open their gifts. But to prolong the magic, my Auntie Neen would say, anyone from age one to three, open your gifts. And then three to five, five to seven, and so on. The older you were each year, the worse it was to wait. And it looked and sounded like an ocean of wrapping paper crashing through that room. When it was time to say goodnight, we'd find our boots in a sea of shoes and headed into the cold to get home with our treasures. Nana and Granddaddy are both in heaven now, but we still carry on that tradition of the Christmas sing-along. Only now, it's the great-grandchildren who sit on Santa's lap. 
Now again, most of us don't get to see Santa on Christmas Eve. We have to make sure we're in bed by the time he arrives. And some parents have creative ways to make sure that that happens. And those can form lasting memories like they did for Mark in Indiana. Talking about Christmas memories, I remember when I was about four or five going to my grandmother's house on Christmas Eve and we had the food and the presents. But on the way home, my dad pointed out the red light on the top of a radio tower and he told us it was Rudolph. And I remember when we got home trying to fall asleep so hard, so fast, because I was afraid that Santa wouldn't come if I wasn't asleep. So if I fast forward many years later when I was working in media for newspaper and radio, I got to create a, an animation of Santa and the reindeer flying over our town that would trigger at a certain time on Christmas Eve on those websites that families could look at. So it was a way of kind of passing that tradition on. So thanks again for what you do and Merry Christmas. Mark has a YouTube channel called The Creative Brief. Check it out and you just might see a familiar face in one of those videos. I put a link to it in the show notes for this episode. You know, one of the reasons that the American Christmas is so special is that it combines the best traditions of so many other cultures. While the traditions of England and Germany, for example, are well known to many here, the great Christmas traditions of Sweden are comparatively lesser known. But Michael in Illinois is one of the few and proud. I want to talk about two Christmas memories, one from my youth and then a recent one that has an origin from my past. My father was of Swedish descent and every year from my youth I remember going to Andersonville in Chicago sometime in the middle of December. Andersonville is a neighborhood with a rich Swedish past along with quite a wide variety of Swedish stores. The store that I remember the most was Wickstrom's. They were a family-owned Swedish food store and would always be packed to the brim with people getting their traditional holiday Swedish foods. We would get a ticket from the counter and wait in line literally sometimes for hours. It was fun because everyone was in the Christmas spirit and I remember my dad talking with people in the Swedish language. Unfortunately, my father passed away when I was a teenager, but thankfully my family carried on their tradition for many years to come until the store went out of business. Many years later, after I grew up and had children of my own, I learned about a Swedish Santa Lucia nighttime service at the Ebenezer Church located in the same neighborhood. The service takes place on December 13th where they crown a Santa Lucia girl and talk about the history of the holiday and sing songs associated with the festival. It's a wonderful time that allows me to share this holiday with my children and to remember my father and his heritage. What is extra special about this holiday for me personally is that my father passed away on December 13th, the actual day of Santa Lucia. Thank you and good Yule to all. For most of us, the love of Christmas is lifelong, but the things we love about Christmas change throughout our lives. Christmas by Christmas, we go through several turning points, especially when we cross over from childhood and adolescence into adulthood. That's something that Art in Iowa can relate to. When I was a teenager, my parents divorced, and I spent a couple years before I was able to see my dad again. And then uh, when I was a late teenager, my dad remarried. And then finally, in my first year of college, I was able to reconnect with my dad and to meet my stepmom for the first time and it was over uh, Christmas break and it had been a long time since I'd celebrated Christmas with my dad and so I was pretty excited about that. I was not prepared for the overwhelming love that uh, my stepmom was able to show me and welcoming me into her family. So that Christmas I was able to spend it uh, with my dad, my stepmom, my, my new stepbrothers and stepsister. We just had a great time, but my favorite memory is Christmas Eve. All of us brothers, we slept in, in the same room, and you know, I'm, I'm a college student, I'm 20 years old, and I was excited for Christmas the next day. My stepmom had told me to, we had to stay in our rooms until they came to get us up, which was fun because it was like I was a kid again, and Christmas morning, and then sure enough, um, down the hall, you hear this laughter and ho, 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 and and jingle bells were ringing. Um, and my, my dad and stepmom came into our room and they were all dressed in their Christmas pajamas. My dad had on these ridiculous looking 
Christmas boxer shorts on over his long johns and <laughs> my stepmom was dressed up in uh, Christmas PJs as well and she was just so excited to have us all together uh, for Christmas that year and she she was Italian so she made us delicious Italian food all day the Christmas dinner was great the, the desserts were out of this world authentic Italian desserts I don't even remember what I got for Christmas that year and it really doesn't matter it was probably the first time as an adult that I looked at Christmas as something other than just a holiday where I got presents uh, you know that it, it really took on a deeper meaning for me and I'll always be thankful for that unfortunately my stepmom passed away a few years ago now but the the joy she has for the season lives on and I, I just want to give a special shout out and thanks to those to those out there who may be a step parent you know the love that you show your kids and and can help restore a family it's such an important thing and thank you for all the 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 joy and love that you show your whole family so brian thanks for letting me share this memory and i hope you and your listeners are having a very merry christmas Art is the host of the Cozy Christmas Podcast. Check that out wherever you find your podcasts or check the show notes for this episode for a link. His Christmas spirit is contagious. But if you ask me, the Christmas spirit itself is contagious. Usually if there's at least one person in the household who has oversized Christmas spirit, then Christmas is a magically festive time for the entire household. Just ask anyone in my family. Or ask Lauren in Australia. Um, I grew up as one of four kids and we had a mother who fostered the Christmas spirit for us with her contagious love of the holiday and she made it very magical for us growing up. Um, We would spontaneously um, do things to enjoy the Christmas season but then for years after they became traditions that we executed with military precision each year. Uh, This involved, like, if we watched a movie X amount of days before Christmas, we would also have to do that again for the next 15 years. And that also included different meals we'd eat during the holiday season, going to see Christmas lights, baking, our Christmas Eve celebration would always be the same. And um, we also really loved sneaking out on Christmas Eve, Christmas morning, to see the presents before dawn undetected by my parents. Um, right now, the love of Christmas for me is um, shared with my two children who make the season extra bright, but my love of Christmas now is really fostered by my brother Colin. Um, his love of Christmas is so contagious and he's introduced me to the podcast. We love chatting about Christmas all the year long, and I just want to say Merry Christmas to you, Colin. I love you. You know, some of my most vivid Christmas memories from childhood actually took place on Christmas Eve. I remember looking at all the Christmas lights from the window of the family station wagon on the way to my grandparents' house across town, or caroling around the neighborhood, and the overall chilly stillness of a New England Christmas Eve. We'll close off this episode with a Christmas Eve memory from Nina in Winnipeg. One of my favorite memories is when me and my siblings were little back in the 1970s. After going to bed on Christmas Eve, there was at least a couple of times where my sister and I, who shared a room, would be woken up around midnight or one in the morning with the sound of my mum or dad speaking loudly in Spanish. In this case, they had gotten through to Spain to speak to our relatives via phone operator after waiting in a long queue on a long distance call, which was standard back then, especially during the holidays. Along with the excitement of all that, our stockings, which hung by our bedsides, were miraculously full already. My mom would quickly come into our bedrooms and tell us that Santa's elves were helping this year and had stopped by already just to fill up the stockings. Santa hadn't been there just yet and wouldn't show up until we fell back asleep, which we always did. But we were allowed to go through our stockings and see what we already got, which was super awesome. And it was always the best stuff, always a great memory. After the house was quiet again, I would always sneak out of bed and look out of my window to see if I could maybe catch a glimpse of Santa or his elves. Merry Christmas and good night. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed listening to everybody's Christmas memories, and I hope it got you thinking about some of your own favorite memories. I'll say it again, we don't have much time left in the season, but there is just enough if you'd like to be included. Again, you can record a voice memo into your phone and send it to christmaspasspodcast at gmail.com, just like Sylvie, Kevin, Mark, Art, Michael, Lauren, and Nina did for this episode. Thanks to all of them for sharing their memories with the rest of the Christmas Past family. 
And even though we're getting closer to the big day, there is still quite a bit left of this season of Christmas Past. Be on the lookout for a couple more episodes with the backstories to some of your favorite Christmas traditions, a couple more memory compilation episodes, and of course, our Christmas Year in Review, which will reach your podcast feeds on Christmas Day. Until we meet again, let me remind you as always that Christmas Past is produced in wonderful Willow Glen, California by yours truly, Brian Earle. You can drop me a line anytime, and I sure wish you would because I love hearing from you. You can email me or connect on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you haven't yet joined the private Christmas Past Facebook group, come on by today and join our year-round celebration. And if you're feeling the Christmas spirit, why not help more people discover this show? It's as easy as telling a friend about it or leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. These are quick and painless ways to show your support that don't cost anything, and they really do make a big difference. And if you do leave a review on Apple Podcasts, I'll even send you a Christmas Past sticker and a handwritten Christmas card as my way of saying thanks. Reach out for details on that. Until we meet again, stay safe and healthy, look out for one another, and may your days be merry and bright.